Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well and having a good day. I'm just going to review what we went over in math and ELA today. So first for math, we went over common factors and greatest common factors. Now what does that mean? So, if we had a factor like 8, for example, or sorry, a number like 8, and we wanted to get into its factors, the numbers that might multiply and give you 8, we would know, oh, well, we times 1 times 8, that, that gives us 8. 2? Yeah, that's 2 and 4. And then 3? No, no, 3 doesn't work with 8. So, we see that the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. We see that these are the numbers that when multiplied will give you 8. So these are the factors. Now, we want to find common factors. Well, for that, we need another number. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 10. Now, to find the common factor, all you have to do is do the exact same process to find the factors as you did with 8. So with 10, we know that it's 1 and 10. And we, it's 2 and 5. And once again, 3 doesn't work, and neither does 4. I'm hoping you're noticing that for me to find my factors, what I'm doing is I'm starting with 1, then I go to 2, then I go to 3. I keep going until I see a pattern like this. As you can see, that got bigger, these got smaller. I got to the point where there are no more factors that work um, by going from 1 to 2, and it makes it easier than, say, me doing 4 times this, 12 times that. If you start from 1 and go all the way down, it'll be the easiest. So now we see we have our factors of 10. So now what we have to do is just see which ones are the common factors. Well, 8 is not common because it's not here, neither is 10, neither is 5. Neither is 4. We see that they each share the common factors of 1 and 2. 1, 2. Thus, our common factors will be 1 and 2. Now, you may be wondering, what's the greatest common factor? Great question. You go to these common factors here, and whichever one's the biggest is your greatest common factor. So even though we know in hindsight 2 is small, 2, though, is the greatest common factor. It's the biggest one of those two options. Thus, the greatest common factor. And just as one more example, just so we can see it one more time. I'm going to erase these. One more example, one more time. We have the numbers 20 and 25. So 20, we start with 1. 1 goes into 20 20 times. We go to 2. 2 goes into 20 10 times. 3 won't work, 4 will work, 4 goes into 25 times. We have our factors. For 25, 1 goes into 25, 25 times, 2 doesn't work, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, it looks like it's going to be 5 and 5 then. We have the factors written down. Let's find those common factors. Well, I see 1 and 1 again, and I see 5 and 5. Thus, our common factors are 1 and 5, which means if I want my greatest common factor, I look at these common factors and I notice, oh hey, it's 1 and 5. Thus, 5 bigger than 1, the greatest common factor is 5. Now for ELA, this is the review. So if you're wondering why I'm going to go fast through these, it's because you have the video to rewatch, plus we did go over these. Now for ELA, we have the red car drove by the house. Now, last week we learned that car here is the simple subject. We also learned that drove here is the simple predicate, which means it's the verb. So the drove is also the verb. Car is also the noun. Now, what we're trying to find this time around is the complete subject. Now, the complete subject is all the words that include the simple subject, or all the words that include the subject as a whole. So this would include the adjectives. This would include the the. So the easiest way to find it, so we know where the simple subject is. You kids did amazing on that. Because it amazing on finding the simple predicate as well. 
You put a line in between because the, sub the complete subject will have nothing of the predicates. Predicates are not existent in the complete subject. So that being said, if you divide it, we'll see here the simple subjects on this side, the simple predicates on that side. Thus, we know that the red car is the complete subject. So the red car here will be the complete subject. It has the simple subject with it, it has nothing of the predicates. This doesn't matter when we're looking for the complete subject. One more example. The blue bird flew away. Once again, to find the complete subject, let's find the simple subject. The simple subject is bird, so simple subject, SS. We want to find the simple predicate, so we can split them up, which is the bird, which is flu, so SP, simple predicate. We'll put a line here to divide them immediately so we don't get confused. And now we look. The complete subject will not have the predicate. So the predicate's over here, subject's over here. That means this all here is the complete subject. And that is it for the day. Well, at least for those two subjects. I hope you all have a good day. You kids keep working hard. I'm very proud of you. Have a great one.